Welcome to this webinar, Ramping Up Cybersecurity in Uncertain Times, brought to you by SureWeb. I'm Guillaume Boivar, Director of Product Innovation. And today we're going to be talking about what we can do in this tr troubled times uh, to help uh, secure our clients. I'll be talking about what can be done around the remote work. Afterwards, uh, Henry's going to take over and present uh, something that we've been working on together, but he's been leading uh, called the Fo Security Foundation Assessment. Uh, it's a simple tool that all of our partners can use to uh, help to assess the security of their clients, basically, uh, but in a way where you can do that uh, introspectly a little bit, do it yourself on your own organization, look at the tools that you're using, and then we'll make a bunch of recommendation. Um, I'll let Andrew talk about it. I don't want to steal his thunder, but definitely the goal is not to sell you all of our products, but really to help you with security. And then the last thing that we'll talk about is a little bit about our products and how they relate to security. I think it's important, the more you know, the better you can get engaged with your account representatives and move forward. So Henry, if you want to flip me forward a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, so That's you can see this is my clean look and this is my oboe look. You can see the <laughs> difference. I've aged, I've aged a lot in the last two months. <laughs> I, I believe we, we all, all have. Yes. Everybody has tricks for haircuts uh, by non-professional. Just put them in the Q&A section. <laughs> uh, uh, so one thing to keep in mind is uh, uh, good spirit is just as important as health. So I try to keep it light. Uh, I'm not taking the situation lightly at all. We've been very serious. Uh, Canada has experienced, especially Quebec, has been a fair share of issue with uh, COVID. So um, it is a pretty heavy situation. But at the same time, if we can't laugh a little bit amongst friends, then what can we do? Um, just uh, just keep going, uh, Henry. Sure. Uh, so just a little bit about context. And so I've talked about context, but how does it relate to security? Uh, I talked about the fact that your first line, uh, your clients have been like a fair amount of them. Um, some of them have slowed down, but I think it's a bit sort of counterbalanced by the people that are in brand new situation and they have to deal with it and it brings a bunch of challenges that you have to deal with it for them. Um, not just that, but there's definitely a sick sick tendency for uh, hackers and attackers and things like that to take advantage of situations like that. Um, I was reading from uh, Barracuda where they spotted a, call it ransomware attack, I guess. It's not a ransomware attack, but where they they basically said, if you don't pay this ransom, you're going to get COVID-19. You and your family will get it. And which, first of all, that's just stupid. But second of all, that's so low class. It is There is no bottom to where those people will go to try and exploit the situation to their advantage. Uh, they get very creative, and that's how we have to get very active on security. Uh, you have to be proactive. We've seen, I think we have stats. Uh, next slide, if you don't mind. Or the one after that. Uh, okay. uh, There's stats sorry. coming. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, so our first work has always been to fast, uh, facilitate, re related to that, has always been to facilitate the remote work. And since SureWeb is a, a cloud service business, we, we are at the forefront of that and we can definitely help you. Uh, there is an opportunity here uh, to be proactive with your clients and to get active in their in their organization and try to move projects along maybe a little bit quicker when they come to cloud services. How many people here have clients that still have a physical Windows, I'm going to be generous, 2008 server in a closet, in a closet somewhere, ticking along like a bomb, like waiting to die and things like that. And they probably don't have a remote access to that. So instead of setting up VPNs and things like that, like it's time to switch to cloud services, look at Azure, look at Performance Cloud, things like that. Certainly SureWeb can accompany you. But the nice thing is, is you definitely have sort of a, a very clear break in time now that you can take off the opportunity to rattle the cage a little bit and and see if uh, we can get some of that stuff done for the people that have clients that have slowed down but are optimistic about the end of it the slowdown could be a great place to run project honestly that's a bit optimistic what we've heard from our partners when we talk to them is that there's a ton of right now work to do there's still maintenance and things like that but most projects have slowed down a lot I think I think that's safe and fair of company to to want to make sure that their their footing is safe and everything, but at the same time you're there to propose things that could be done during this time of uh, remote work and everything security things that need to be done now to support it and everything. 
Right. So the no, first right. the first main thing being that facilitate remote work. Henry. Yep. Again. Yep. So just we're, we won't talk about it in a very specific sense. I prefer specific things, but we'll keep that for the security assessment. Uh, this is more of a of a three step program and most likely like you've done the short term enablement like you're probably between that short term and long term vision but uh you have to get started first and then just get people working can you switch to the next one i think it'd be better for that explanation sure of course so step one it, like these aren't technical guidelines they're they're really operational guidelines and they're more to guide you in your relationship with your client around enabling that that remote work and making sure everything works so the first thing is ensure communication and we mean that in every sense of the word so they need that technical platform and uh i'd be remiss if i didn't mention uh, uh pbx or cloud pbx as a solution uh a lot of companies still work almost exclusively through email and phone well you want to make sure the phone thing gets keeps going uh it'd be a great opportunity to switch them to something like teams or a microsoft e5 that includes a cloud pbx but really if they want to drop in replacement for their phone at home then definitely look at something like Sure Web Cloud PBX uh, through soft phones and things like that. Very, very easy to replicate the experience that they had, but with everybody working from home. Like we, us Sure Web, for example, if you call us, you won't be able to tell the difference between when we were everybody in the office and now that we're everybody remote. So you want to make sure those means of communications are in place. This is the first thing. Next thing, setting up a remote access. There's another thing to look at. I'll use Sure Web again as an example. We always had the project, and we've always had people working from home, but it was always kind of not as good as it should be. Uh, what's the word in uh, the expression? I know the expression, friend. What's the expression in English for uh, a, a mechanic with a bad car? Um, our own uh, employee support for remote work was a bit lacking, uh, but this was just a kick in the ass that we needed, and we really sort of took uh a few steps very quickly and now everybody can work from home it's very secure we have like the vpn set up and things like that it was a little bit easier for us definitely because we use a lot of cloud services but it it centered around a lot of remote access as well uh let's move on so virtual desktop could be a next step that you look at uh if they have line of business application things like that that's where that simple remote work may not work uh instead of looking at running their pc in the office and then running a pc at home you could look at something like virtual desktop uh certainly microsoft uh, uh wvd right the acronym um their new virtual desktops as part of azure are a lot simpler than they used to be uh and even if they're still a little bit too complex or or you're sort of uh feels a little daunting to get going on that uh talk to us we're working with a partner called nerdio uh, to make it, once you use Nergio with WVD, I mean, could be a, couldn't be much easier. If any of you have experience with Nergio, don't hesitate to post it in the uh, comment section or questions. I'd uh, love to hear from everybody. This feels like a little bit of a monologue when I get going, so do comment on anything that I say. Call me crazy. I enjoy it. Uh, but the next step, step five, is a little bit while we're what we're why we're here now and what we're talking about is stay secure. So security people even myself a product security person would tell you that security should be the first thing you think about it should be part of how you're engineering your projects and it should be baked in definitely especially if you're bigger building bigger system more complex mission critical stuff you should bake in security uh it's part of the philosophy of uh, devops secure uh, devops sec which great acronym but devops security uh, to make sure that the thought of security is not something that you layer on top of systems and applications and things like that, but it is part of it. Um, it's not realistic in a situation like this, I don't feel. Your, your clients are in a current situation, they need to move to a new uh, state of being, state of operation. You can't go, well, 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 we need to rethink everything so we can bake in security and everything. So, you should get them up and running, make sure the business survives and is operating well, uh, uh, manually handle the little uh, rough edges and everything like that. But as you move forward, you really got to look at that security. Uh, some of the challenges that we've seen are around uh, data access, like privacy protection. I don't know if you have anybody, from, if we have anybody from Europe in the crowd looking at the names. 
not sure it's a little mix but like things like gdpr and the privacy and access if you have like uh, SOC compliance um you definitely have to make sure that you're thinking about all right i gave them access at home if they download files, do I lose complete control or do I have DLP in place and encryption and things like that? Uh, it's definitely something to consider. Uh, and then redundancy. So let's say you had a complete system, it works well, it's secure. What happened if, if like, do you have any single points of failure in there? Uh, definitely something that you discuss with your client to manage expectations. Um, we often have the challenge where the cloud is seen as magical. So what do you mean it's not redundant? I thought it was in the cloud. Well, sure, but that's not, those two things are not synonyms. So I think it's worth a conversation and the conversation shouldn't be them challenging what kind of redundancy is already there. It's much more about you leading the conversation than asking, what do they expect? Okay, so if you have a failure or how long can you be without a phone system? How long can you be without access to those computer or that software? And then consequently, you can inform them to the service level of the platform that they've chosen, the redundancy that is currently built in, and then talk about projects to make that better. Um, I think more and more what we're seeing now, and it's changing every day. I mean, we don't know. I wish I knew it would certainly help me have a lot less anxiety, but I don't. I don't know what's going to happen exactly. But what we're seeing is people aren't going to rush to go back to the office. When we're talking about large company, which which are the ones that we have the most visibility in, it's going to be very slow. So Twitter just announced that the hard deadline for getting people back is never. So the CEO tweeted, we won't force anybody to come back at any point. And I think, honestly, they're realizing that it's cheaper to have people working from home. Uh, but Google also said 2021. I think Facebook said 2021. They'll start opening opening offices sooner, but they won't rush people. And one of the things that will sort of that we're sure web is expecting will happen is that it will reset a little bit the expectations of workers. So you will have to offer work from home now. Like it, it was already like I'm not inventing anything. It was already a big part of uh, job conditions and everything. But I think now it'll be sort of a given. Like. If you say, no, 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 everybody's in the office, you don't have a choice, really? Uh, I think that will become more and more of a hurdle to hiring. So good for you, really, because as an MSP, that's probably an easy situation to manage with your own employees, like they can work from home, tech guys can work from home. Uh, and then it's an opportunity with your clients to make sure that they're uh, equipped to offer those services and that they're well equipped. Uh, we have a number of people that are working with us on our performance cloud, the infrastructure as a service that we offer. And basically what they do is they have a standard offer where they replace everything with remote desktop. So they go remote app for the applications, remote desktop for everything else that they can't remote app. And then that's it. Like the employees of their clients are all working on a central installation, which really as a partner gives them a central place to manage and really makes them more efficient. So all of that are great opportunities, but you can all sort of present them under the, the texture of security. Like security is the, the thing that will help you drive those things. Instead of saying, hey, I have something to sell you. It's more of a, I, I want to make you secure and here's the different proposals of what we can do. Moving on, uh, Henry. Yep. So in fact, this was the slide I think you were yes. Re referencing before. Yeah, so some memory, like it, some memory left. <laughs> so there's security there, there's always security issues as a security uh person myself the opportunities are there like what keeps me up at night is the fact that people are so insecure not the fact that i'll run out of business opportunities that i'm very comfortable with and you should be as well it's why the people that are here that are focusing on security are generally very successful um I see Errol is here, so hi Errol. He's one of the, our partners that has made a switch to really uh, switch his uh, speech to security, security centric, and I think it's worked really well for him. Uh, so you can see before like stuff like just bad password. Uh, I could talk about the, the new password attacks, like like uh, the, the password spray. Well, they're not new, but they're very popular now. Uh, and they've been enabled by system like Office 365, which really makes it easier. Uh, unpatched vulnerabilities is a classic. 
uh, even like no scanning internally, things like that were just so common. Like people that take care of their security and I'm assuming you guys are part of that group, it's hard to fend them how little everybody else is taking care of security. And that's, that's just a common misconception. Just assume everybody's deficient in security and then help them. And if they aren't, then great, terrific. But now during COVID, then and unless confusion regarding government assistance, uh, yeah. So all those programs that the government has put in place cannot be gated by a visit to a government office, right? So that can be the control to make sure everybody like is honest and everything. So it all has to do to be done electronically and remotely. So you're a small business owner and you get an email that says, you know that official, which is true, program uh, for subvention, which you've applied to, which let's say they have, uh, click here to get the details and it's a PDF. Who wouldn't open that? Like it, you're waiting for that PDF to save your business. Well, turns out it wasn't the official PDF, it was an attack. And now your computer is hacked and then they get into your office and then they, they do some traversal, they put in some forwarding rule and then you're, I won't use the word, you're screwed, let's say. <laughs> uh, we've seen 700% rise in phishing scams uh, 33% rise in overall cyber attacks. So like I said, when when cyber attackers sense chaos and vulnerability and instability, that's when they get the most active because that's the opportunity. They will not wait for the opportunity. They will take action. That's how they eat. So believe me, you have to be just as proactive. Okay, let's move on. Absolutely. So one of the things that we did, and I'll pass it over to Henry because you already are sick of hearing my voice, is we did a security foundation program. So I'll, uh, Henry, do you want to present it? Start with, sure. with why we did it. I think it's a, sure. it's a, it's an interesting story. Absolutely. So, um, the one of the things that, that we noticed, uh, out there is that, you know, the, the, there's a lot of misinformation as, you know, there's a lot of misinformation and just a lot of interesting, endlessly interesting details, but all of which was difficult for people to actually make proper sense of, where they stand uh, with respect to the security posture, and also uh, with respect to say like uh, any clients they may have, where their clients may stand, right? It uh, it's it's uh, it's there are two bodies of of guidelines and standards if you can, uh, that you can uh, reference that actually uh, cover basically every aspect of cybersecurity. Uh, and just what makes for best practices. However, uh, they are respectively several hundred pages long each. And I'll, it's like I'll uh, talk about them very shortly. And it's very, there's there's no set rule or regulation that makes it sta uh, a standardized way to actually uh, do the assessments like in, in any uh, repeatable or scalable way. Uh, and it's always been left, to, people have always been left to their own devices to actually do this particular uh, uh, cybersecurity assessment, right? Yeah, so if you're talking even about specifically about NIST, it's they they don't get into specifics. Like they're they're what they're sharing are concepts and ideas and things you should look at, but not specifically how to do things. No, definitely not recommending any specific tools or anything like that. So there is a a big gap between NIST recommendations and like practical implementation in an SMB by somebody like you, a uh, managed service provider. Uh, I think CIS is a lot more practical, which is which is good. Mm -hmm. That's why we kind of combined the two to really best of both worlds. Yep, exactly. So, yep, that, that's what we're kind of getting to, right? So, uh, in fact, I'll actually start backwards on this slide since, you know, uh, Guillaume has actually brought up the uh, NIST and CIS controls. So, as I was saying, so the NIST, that's National Institute of Science and Technology Belief, or Standards and Technology, uh, they give so very, very big thick book of uh, of guidelines which are purposely comprehensive and vague because it has covered effectively all use cases and there's no real recommendations and the CIS controls which actually is more user friendly in that actually provides uh, guidelines for how to go about securing your environment depending on the size of your organization and the types of say like resources you actually have available to you so to that end, uh, we've actually built this uh, security foundation program, uh, and you know we—it's uh, uh, the reason why we're calling it foundations because we truly believe that you actually have to have a proper foundation in order to to secure yourself. It's it's built off of this so that it actually can be easier uh, uh, to to implement and understand and to deploy. 
So with respect to program itself, it's a free program. It consists of uh, an assessment, uh, uh, which I'll be uh, demoing uh, shortly, uh, followed by a consultation, again, free, given by us, and then further access to our entire library of resources that we can actually help uh, you as partners to uh, uh, carry the conversation with your customers on how to uh, on how to, to, to promote cybersecurity and how to become a better managed security provider, as well as say, that, you know, if you, you know, and for those among you who are, say, a, a, a direct customer, this is something you can actually apply to yourself, right? Um, effectively, this program, it's, it's, we put this in place to be able to assess the, the, the security vulnerabilities and security posture to, and really just like start conversations and recommend solutions. Uh, and this is all you'll see in the, the detailed reports that we actually give. And for the, those among you who are MSPs, Using this program, uh, it's, a, it's a way for you to de really demonstrate your value and say create the like, uh, opportunities for conversations to say uh, grow your security offerings to uh, uh, you know for for your customers. So you know basic three steps that can break down. It's like, you know, there's an assessment followed by consultation followed by an implementation, and we help you every step of the way. So. Um, I'm going to, to just break this down a little bit further here. One of the things that uh, we had in mind when we uh, were developing this is that we want to make this as uh, useful and user-friendly as possible, even though we're taking from you know, uh, something that's necessarily a very technical uh, a technical subject and which many people that we've uh, encountered have had to say, like spend many hours trying to, just, uh, the, the, to internalize and then say like laymanize for lack of a better term to, to be able to approach uh, non-security experts uh, uh, to, to help them understand like uh, security problems, and um, as again like uh, the the we also found we basically formulated uh, this assessment in such a way that it uh, you know it's it just goes right to the heart of what we've identified to be the most common uh, issues that are likely to be found in uh, uh, well in the, the average uh, security environment sorry average IT environment. So the questions in uh, in the questionnaire is broken down in such a way that uh, there's you know the question itself as you can see right here. Uh, it's also uh, has reference to the question category that's uh, delineated in the NIST guidelines. So this example is a question in the detect category. Um, and one of the important things here is that we provide the context for why we're actually asking the question. This is uh, the, the uh, when we actually say, take a look at other uh, assessments or other say marketing tools, disguising themselves as assessments, stuff like this is simply just not there. You, there's no context for it. There's no real understanding of why something's actually asked. We put this here because we want this tool to be both uh, useful and also informative for those among you who haven't say, uh, or say just getting into uh, cybersecurity. So that's uh, that's how this is going to be presented. Then beyond that, once the questionnaire has actually been filled out, uh, right away uh, we provide uh, an actionable executive summary just just right there and then. So and what's in this executive summary is a uh, you know, a breakdown by the the security layer categories uh, that are touched upon in the assessment, as well as say. Uh, a quantifiable, uh, you know, proportion, uh, uh, percentage-wise, quantifiable level of risk uh, for uh, your uh, for the cybersecurity posture that's just been uh, that you've just assessed using the tool, and only like after you've gone all this, if this uh, this, this if this has been useful and, and uh, 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 useful and informative, at that point you can actually get a full report, and that's when you actually. Uh, 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 sign up, give your email, give, uh, give us your name, and we send you a full report. And this report is a much more detailed uh, dive into the threats and vulnerabilities that have been identified by the assessment. So at this point, you'll see it, uh, you'll see that uh, this report has the threats, the vulnerabilities, the recommendations, uh, as well as like the detailed risks. And what's important to know about the uh, about the the threats and recommendations is that we also, again, in a bid to be uh, as helpful and get, bring as much value as possible, the recommendations are broken down into what we call our general recommendations. So, and this is, like, say, for example, uh, what I like to say, like our vendor neutral recommendations. So, for example, there's uh, even uh, recommendations that involve, say, open source solutions, if it comes to that, and obviously our sure web recommendations. Now. 
the, the reason why it's broken down in such a way is that again we're trying to be helpful we're trying to bring value to this uh, uh, to, to 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 you and to say like any conversations you may have with your customers and you know we don't want this to be uh, a naked product push so the recommendation the general recommendations are definitely there to help uh, help you all out but obviously uh, SureWeb can actually say make the implementation of all these recommendations much more uh, 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 much more smooth and much more fluid um, and so this like, is in a nutshell is what you will get from the assessment and the reporting side of things um, so, so a quick I'm, word from uh, from the crowd it's not a question but it's a statement somebody mentioned that IST has the four five pillars of yes. uh, uh, identify protect attack respond and recover uh, as you can see that's how we split it as well like you can see that in this example this is a detect uh, question or threat and and we went by those same guidelines that was our goal to be as close as possible to the uh, modern best practices uh, that should be uh, uh, as popular as possible in the industry today hmm. um, so that was that was one of the comment and yeah the comment comes from the fact that we only show three at this time uh, maybe you could talk to that a little bit uh, Henry no, sure, of course. So yes, no, like we recognize that there's only like three right now in this report, and it's like so. This is uh, this is our first full ver this is our first full version of this report, and we're actually even as we speak, obviously not as we speak right now, we're right here, but we're actually polishing, uh, not excuse me, not polishing up. We're actually adding uh, more questions to this uh, to this um, uh, the questionnaire. All five categories are actually covered, uh, say in the uh, in the con uh, consultative session. And this tool in and of itself, it um, it's you know uh, we chose these three categories to uh, put into this report uh, in its form it's because these were the most immediately uh, shall we say actionable uh, actionable uh, items right away in the report. We have not uh, there uh, the other two categories aren't actually missing. Uh, per se, it's just like this is like the, 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 uh, our current version of this report uh, that uh, we're putting out there. Uh, the the uh, we you know I say our current work on this uh, uh, on the questionnaire is ongoing and basically all the categories are going to show up very shortly. Yeah, I think oh, uh, yeah, I think it does. Basically, is this is very usable now, and the rest of the categories are coming. We That's focus on students because we got to start somewhere and we thought there was enough value in the assessment now to put it between your hands. I mean, one of the reasons that we did that is also so we can get your feedback and, and keep improving it. Uh, we work very closely with our partners, as most of you know. Uh, try it. Uh, try it on yourself. Try it with somebody else. Like, take think of one of your clients and then answer the question for them. And then uh, give us your feedback for sure. Uh, we're for us this will be a living thing uh, we already have like Henry said we're already working on that next version that includes more information about more things and then we want to keep pushing it towards a more practical and practical tool as you can use yep so you want to show us uh, does it is this live like does it is it real or is it a PowerPoint presentation to Henry yeah, no, it absolutely is real so if you just allow me to pause my PowerPoint presentation for a moment and let me just bring you the actual assessment itself. So right here, this is the assessment. Can everyone uh, see my screen? Yeah, it's looks good. Like, Go ahead. Yeah, looks like it's a yes. Perfect. All right. So. Sorry, let me just turn this off. There we go. All right, so this is the assessment. And in fact, I invite all of you uh, to just go to assessment.sureweb.com. And this is where the live version of the tool lives. And uh, we're going to get started right away. And one thing to call your, your attention to right away, in the spirit of actually making this useful uh, uh, right off the bat, uh, we're not asking you to sign up at the start. That's just like that is not at all of the plan here. Uh, you know, we don't. 
we're going to give, let you have access to well, anyone have access to the questions right from the beginning, and then only uh, once you get to, to the very end, uh, the, uh, and you've actually had your your executive summary, and you want to see your full report, then you uh, can fill in your information, and then we will email you uh, a, a link to your full report, as well as say like you know, display the full report to you right away. So I'm just going to go through this right now, as as you as I'd already shown earlier before on the PowerPoint. Uh, the questions are broken down by you know the question itself, the uh, the actual say like you know context for why we're asking, as well as like an easy navigation marker to indicate the number or uh, question that you're on. So we start off with some very general questions, so you can actually go, go uh, uh, get into say like uh, uh, just get into the uh, what type of customer or what your typical type of customer is uh, uh, has in terms of number of users. So I'm just going to put down number 21 to 50, then just click next. Uh, and yeah, so then we ask a number, basically a number of devices and uh, a number of devices in your organization. So I don't know about you, but me personally, um, many, many, uh, many of my peers uh, and uh, many of my peers, many people actually uh, work in small businesses that I've noticed, they usually have seven to nine different items. It adds up pretty quickly. So do that. And then cloud services is just, you know, uh, the official count usually is much higher than 10. It adds up again pretty quickly. So these are the general questions, uh, which I'm going to speed through just a little bit quickly. This bring you to uh, a more cybersecurity oriented question. So for example, do you ensure only authorized hardware is in your typical customer's environment? And then again, we explain why we ask. So shadow IT accounts for up to 50% of IT spend. Well, that's a pretty terrifying number, if you ask me. Um, so it's a pretty important uh, question to ask. Again, we took the, the information and the guidelines from NIST and CIS and, uh, and interpreted it in such a way that it uh, reflects the most typical areas of uh, cyber uh, cybersecurity vulnerability. And this is for us one of the questions that is really kind of paramount that need to be answered. So. I'm just going to click yes on this. So I'm going to do a couple more questions like this and then speed through it to show you what happens when you've uh, answered all the questions. So obviously when you rewatch this uh, webinar, you'll be able to see all the questions or alternately, like the best way is to just go to assessment.shorub.com and just fill out the questionnaire on your own. So I'm going to click yes. Okay, so as you can see, it's like the flow is pretty simple. The the interface, like we've kept it as simple, okay, user as friendly as possible. Uh, and with almost no exceptions, all questions are going to be yes, no, uh, yes, no uh, questions. Again, in the spirit of trying to keep things good and simple. Right, so at this point, I'm just going to speed through right to the end. So I'm no longer paying attention to how I'm answering. I just want to show you what this looks like. As you do that, uh, let me comment on the spirit of those questions. So we were, uh, it was a bit of a conundrum for us to strike a balance between practical recommendation because we wanted to make sure this tool wasn't just saying, hey, you should be more secure or you should have better identity management. Like that doesn't help you very much. So we wanted to make sure we were practical and gave you like uh, a, a path to follow to solutions and tools you could use. And I don't mean just products, but I mean category of tools uh, and things like that. But afterwards, we also wanted it to apply to most people and, and for you to be able to go through the assessment without having to go uh, run a, a Netstat or, or uh, uh, things like that within your organization. So uh, it kind of, hopefully, it strikes a good balance as a first, uh, first try where the questions are about best practices. They're general enough that you can answer them for most of your client, but they give you a sense of a practical answer and a practical path that you can take to resolution. Uh, as we move forward, I think we will, one of the things that we'll do is we'll dig deeper into uh, more specifics and more technical questions that that require a bit more work to answer. Yep, absolutely. No, that's uh, that's uh, uh, that's uh, part of our planning roadmap. So we've come here. This is just an executive summary, uh, but already I said like, the idea was to make this actionable even right from here, because here it get, already gives you a sense of just where uh, the amount of risk uh, you face or you know your your your, your typical uh, client faces uh, in each of these uh, areas and at this point if you want more click get the full report 
So I'm just going to fill this out quickly. Test. And show you what happens uh, when I do this. So obviously that's my actual email. If any of you actually need any help, uh, hey, feel free to drop me a line. That's obviously not my phone number hour. Submit. So once we've done that, the report, uh, the full report generates itself. And here, once you get the report, and whereas the executive summary is short and sweet, this is actually going to be considerably longer. It's got full details when you open it up. Uh, as I showed before in the PowerPoint, it has uh, the threats, the vulnerabilities, um, and then, like I say, the general recommendations and how SureWeb can actually help. So this report uh, I just generated fairly at random. Um, the, so I'm not going to get into like any uh, deep dive analysis into this. And for that, I've actually created another report we can actually go through look, uh, quickly. But before I do that, I want to call your attention to a couple more things. So if you click on print, you get a PDF copy of this uh, you know, almost right away. While I'm waiting for that to generate, uh, it always happens. <laughs> Every time I give a demo, the print function is the one that always slows down. There we go. Okay. Okay, and it's opened up. Right, and here we are. So here's the full report that uh, was just generated based on uh, the questionnaire that we've just done. That's one. Then two, the other one, again, always in a bit to make, the, uh, make this useful. We also generate a hash, like a permanent hash link to like, associate with the email that you use to, 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 to get the report. So this link here is permanent. Um, copy, and just to show you, you open it in another browser window, and off you go. It's going to automatically go back to the report that, uh, uh, that we've actually just generated. So, as I said, I did do another report before all of this, so let me just get there now. Because I wanted to highlight uh, uh, something of in, something interesting. Sorry, not something interesting. Uh, I want to highlight basically one of the other important re uh, uh, uses that we th uh, thought was uh, worth uh, worthwhile to, to to bring to your attention. So. The the obviously this report has a lot of detail uh, and it's 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 purpose built that way. We want the, the, this to be as useful and as uh, comprehensive as possible without you know say overly drowning people in details. But nonetheless, just by dint of the fact that we're trying to make this useful, it's going to have a fair amount of detail. So uh, with that in mind, though, uh, it's like th this is where say you know uh, either on your own like a, a deeper reading of this on your own or by say like with the help of one of our uh, one of our uh, uh, one of our team, one of our consultative uh, members of our team, you can actually say go in and actually look for the, those patterns and themes uh, and if, of like say like general issues uh, that you can actually target like say uh, to, so as a, so that this doesn't become an especially overwhelming problem. So just an example here, right? Um, in this particular report, there's you know uh, there's like, uh, counted something like say ten or fifty about ten eleven different areas like individual threats that uh, are problematic however if we save uh, uh, if we take a, a deeper look and just well, go into uh, just cluster it we can see that for example we hear we see like a, a, a repeated air, uh, issues with say uh, access right so you know there's uh, admin access that can, might be given to malicious actors or unauthorized access to like, the environment like, like, is an issue and then even again um, Unmonitored uh, uh, suspicious behaviors might be an issue. We see that we can quickly see that, uh, say, like overall, there's a problem with uh, like either authorizations or identity, like identity uh, management, or just plain well, uh, like access, like a permi uh, permissions issues. So, and it's like in uh, 
in that light, it's like this report. It's like you know, it gives, it lays out every uh, uh, every issue that uh, that emerges from, say, like uh, a careful answering of all the questions. However, uh, by do by taking a bit more time on this, then becomes actually easier to say like uh, try to come up with uh, uh, a multifaceted solution that uh, that takes care of multiple problems all at once. So this is something that I thought uh, that I think is well again in the spirit of actually being useful. This is how this report, one of the ways this report was actually built to be used. So I don't know if uh, Guillaume, if you have, if you want to add anything to that. No, I think that was really the idea when we built it. And I hope that our partners find it that way. And if they, whether they do or they don't, I hope they get, just give us feedback, as I mentioned. Um, I felt the question and answers were structured in a way that it could start a lot of conversation with your clients. And that's that's the whole point, right? Whether you bring the assessment, which you do it with them, do it separately and then show them, or even if you never show them at all, uh, it will help you get those conversations started and those those projects on track to better security, really. Yep, exactly. So okay. this is so that's uh, that's it for the the demo portion of this. Um, if there's no questions about this right now, let me just take a look. I think we're good to no, we're good to move on, uh, Henry. Let's keep going. All right. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Time is running fast. Absolutely. All right. So, so here just we go. a quick word uh, on on the business aspects of security around uh, these times. So, if you don't mind switching to the slide. Yep. Absolutely. So on the partner side, on your side as an MSP, some of the some of the challenges that we've run into or have been communicated by partners around a lack of interest for security from our clients, and then uh, some difficulty around uh, building an offer and everything. We're talking about the lack of awareness. Uh, let me combine most of those questions that are there on the slide into one sort of broader statement of how to I I approached it uh, with different clients in the past. We've been telling our partners and Microsoft has been telling their partners, and it's a very constant thing that you need to try to move away from being a technical consultant to being business critical. And you need to, the way to do that is to move your conversations from very technical conversations to very business centric conversation. And it's easy to say, just like you go to your client, tell me what's your next critical project. And then you can give them advice on how to technically build it. And then that's how you gather uh, the potential for all the opportunities and everything. It is not that easy. If if your client is a, a company that works well and they have a process and they've hired you to fix computers and network and take care of the internet connection, they won't naturally involve you in business critical conversation. And it, be, it can be a really hard hurdle to get over. I understand that. I lived it. I get it. I think that we need to think about security as the Trojan horse of business conversations. So if you are a IT consultant that is being seen as a technical resource or you're seen as a technical person, you can definitely go to management and say, hey, we're going to do a security assessment. I think it's important these day and agers, like take COVID as a as a as a vehicle. Because of COVID, because of the change in structure and everything, we need to review where the data is, how it's communicated, things like that. And a, a professional security assessment, one that is well done, starts with business questions. It doesn't start with, with what's the brand of your router and is your firmware up to date? It starts with what's the real value of your company? Is it the data? Is it the people? Is it the process? Do you have trade secrets? Okay, how do we protect that value? Because if there was an infinite budget on security, we wouldn't have those conversations. You wouldn't need us to give you any advice or anything like that. It'd be super easy. But there is always a budget, there's always a limit to what they will do. And that limit is usually dictated by what you're protecting. It has to be worth it to do those protections. So the beginning of the conversation around security is a business conversation. And here you go. All of a sudden, under the guise, and it's not a guise, like it's it really is an important conversation. It will really help with security, but you are now part of a business critical conversation. Where's the value today? Where will the value be tomorrow so we can make sure that the protection is baked in? I talked about that before. So how I raise security awareness is to not talk about security products. And that's very hard for me because I love features and buttons and what does this 
this thing do and what does that new technology do? I talk about the business. So what are you doing today? Where's the value in your company? Is it protected? Is it as protected as it could be? What happens if you lose this value? How long can you go without access to this information? Because a lot of time the value is going to be data, let's be honest. So it becomes data protection, data governance, uh, data recovery, uh, things like that. And then you build your offer consequently. The Something that we've been working with partners and the one that have the most success, they can show that security is not an add-on. Security is not a skew. Security is part of their offer. So it's their, their value proposition includes, I'm not selling you Office 365. You're going to buy Office 5 anyway. You can buy it for somebody else. If that's the only reason they come to you, it will quickly become a conversation about price. And nobody likes those conversations. I don't. Uh, what you have to do is to present, like, I'm going to manage. I'm going to give you the tools to do your work. I'm going to manage everything else that you don't want to manage. It includes having your license, yes. But it also means being secure. It also means taking care of everything and stay on top of things, remote access, et cetera. And then you sell that as a service and you make security a big part of it, a big value proposition and a differentiator. So that's how I build the offer and I pitch it and I raise security awareness. Talking of security awareness, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention training. We didn't mention training so far. Again, as a, as a product person, your your engineering type, not necessarily engineers, but your your technical people, we will always think of the system first, the software, the hardware, the network, all those things we will will come top of mind very quickly and we'll go, that router super old, no good, let's get a next gen one, things like that. In the end, almost regardless of what you do, your users can screw it up. And, and I'd love a comment in the comment section that says, no, 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 I have a setup. My users cannot screw it up. It's impossible for them. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. At the end of the day, the user will always find a way to click something they shouldn't have clicked. So you need to make, make sure security training, security awareness is part of your process um, in, in this modern, like it could just be sessions with your clients and them like stuff to read, things like that. Ideally, you go a little bit more modern. You use a platform that helps you with the training. Ideally, it contains uh, attack simulations and things like that, like phishing examples and all that. Uh, I've been part of a few exercises that tested uh, simulated phishing. Always, always very scared after I see the results. Very worried. But at the end of the day, I should be happy. It's a good opportunity for you and I. Um, legal liability is a different question. That's a good one. If you're going to offer security-related services, and honestly, if you're in IT, you already are, it is worth it to have your contract reviewed for sure by a lawyer uh, with the understanding that you can't promise security. You can't guarantee security. That's, I think that's the most direct way to say it. I can guarantee you I can improve your security. I can guarantee you that we'll do better, that you'll be safe, as safe as you can be for the amount of money that you're paying me. Like that's what we're here for. But I cannot guarantee that you'll never be hacked. I cannot guarantee that you're safe. The, the thing that you identified that should be protected, I cannot guarantee that they'll be protected. It's sad, but it is a reality. Anybody else is selling snake oil. If they say, here's security, buy it, then you should be worried. That's not how it works. The idea is to make your clients as unattractive to hackers as possible and attractive enough that the value that they're protecting is not worth the effort to get into it. And that's a, a tricky concept to pitch to client, but it's definitely what they need to understand. Uh, so legal liability becomes a real question. We've seen a lawsuit and I looked it up. It's still ongoing, so it hasn't been thrown out. End client, and I know the work of the MSP, it's not one of our partners. I, I saw it in the news, uh, MSP news. So MSP worked with a company. They were responsible for a number of things, including email, productivity, software, and all that. Client gets fish, uh, gets false victim to the business compromise, a business email compromise, BEC, uh, and sends money somewhere. Uh, and client turns around and sues the MSPs because they see they say they were not secure enough. It was their responsibility and they're not secure enough. That is a very, very scary proposition. The MSP had very little to do with actually being dumb enough to fall for the BEC and send money somewhere else. But at the same time, it's true that they were responsible for the IT system. So should you play... Uh, should you play a little bit of a, a, a ostrich and put your hand in the sand? 
I wouldn't personally. It's just sort of asking for trouble later. And even if they don't sue you, then if they lose confidence in your ability to do what's needed, I would turn around and just be proactive. I would propose things. I would move forward. Uh, so that's a little bit of the different obstacles and how we look at them. Tell me, put it in the question, if what I say just practically doesn't make sense. Uh, I try as much as possible to build my answer from what I get from the partners. I talk to partners all the time. Um, but I love to hear from everybody to challenge the concept that we're pushing. If you say, well, that sounds nice, but it can't be done because X, Y, Z. I love to know that X, Y, Z, and then we can work together on a solution that actually works. Uh, Henry? Yep. Slide me. <laughs> So a little bit about SureWeb, I'll go quickly here because I think most of you are all uh, SureWeb partners. Those are the uh, three clear-cut places where we can help you succeed. So product and solution, obviously, I won't get into that right now. Cloud expertise, that's where we want to help. Um, there's a lot of partners to work with that were great with traditional security, so firewalls and routers and uh, endpoint protection as in antivirus, things like that. More traditional protection. Uh, but weren't so uh, up to date or had not had a time to ramp up on cloud services and security. So that's some place that we definitely want to help. Uh, and we could provide it through pre-sales expertise and technical support and then account management. Uh, they don't know as much about the technical aspects, but they can definitely guide you in the right direction. Uh, and it will even get to co-sale assistance where we will get on calls with you to close sales. So you want us to be sure web? As, as expert in some field or another, we'll be there. You want us to be uh, white label and, and show up as your personnel, then we'll do that as well. Uh, and we can also with things help you with things that are a bit more uh, operational, like uh, obviously our partner portal, the billing, the integration. Integration, we've made like giant progress in the last year. So um, if you don't know what we can do there with integration to your RMM and PSAs, definitely look into that, talk to your rep. And then migration is one of our specialties. Okay, moving on. So, so here's guess, a quick. Go ahead. No, so the actually no, uh, I'll just I just wanted to like, uh, mention uh, that uh, we it's two fifty five and there's like, yeah. a couple of questions. So that's it. Please. Okay, continue. so let me let me go quickly. Uh, like I said, if we don't get to your question, we'll answer directly offline. Uh, this is a slide just to give you an idea of the portfolio that we have. If you only know us for Office 365, uh, then shame on us, honestly, it's because we're being, if that's the case, then we're doing a poor job of awareness. Um, I'm assuming most of you know that we sell different products. You may not know the extent of what we sell uh, from product we create ourselves, like Office Protect, to G Suite. Did you know that we sell G Suite and other Google product? We do. Uh, so do ask us. We have a learning platform that's there, Brainstorm. Uh, we do a lot of infrastructure. If you only know us from the productivity end, uh, we have a whole team for uh, uh, partner services around uh, servers, uh, server hosting, disaster recovery, all that stuff as well. And then a lot of security, obviously. But that's on the next slide, I think. We can skip ahead to this slide, ah, yes. There you go. Sorry about that. Uh, so here, when people ask me, what is modern security when I'm selling Office 65? Well, so I've seen some partners do this. It's very successful, different variation of this, but it looks to be roughly what we have here. So if we're talking about securing a small business, and I'm talking small, Office Protect will help you to not go with the default security and monitoring of Office 65. So it really ramp up your control of Office 5 security for a very, very affordable price, part of all uh, our packages. So make sure you look into that. After that, proof point, you want to have email security. Email is such a big part of running a small, medium business. You want to, you want to put a little bit more than the very vanilla uh, what's given by uh, Office in their base product. Um, Bitdefender and point protection, I think the endpoint is still very, very relevant to security these days. Um, I think if we look at the zero, zero trust model, you want to assume networks are not secure. People that work remotely, public places, uh, even your your their small environments are compromised. You want to make sure the device is secure. And then online backup for recovery because that's your safety net. Um, all that being said, and I wanted to mention only once, all of those, except Office Protect, all of those products can also be gone directly as part of Office 365. 
So then it becomes a question of, do you want better integration? Because the products that are directly integrated in Office 365 are generally better integrated. It's, it's often the main selling point of Microsoft products. Uh, or do you want a third party? Do you prefer relying on somebody else for your security than the vendor of, let's say, Office 365? It's, it's a fair question. We can help you in both cases. There's plus and minuses in, in a lot of columns. Um, there's even the profitability question for you as a partner. Uh, so all those things are meant to be considered when you take uh, you make some choices. You can mix and match. Maybe you don't like the Office 365 ATP uh, anti-spam and you'd like to get proof point that said. All very valid answers. So talk to your, to your account representative and they can help you there. Uh, one thing that I'd like to mention uh, is Intune. So Intune is device uh, management from Microsoft. Uh, in these times of uh, working remotely, definitely keep that in mind. It can be a nice first step when you go from Office 65 using, let's say, Teams and things like that in a remote setting, then you want to uh, turn on, let's say, Intune, and that leads you to being able to do things with that and uh, uh, Microsoft 365 Defender ATP. Uh, so those are all things that play well together. Uh, we can help you with all of those, just running out of a bit of time here. So. I think we're at the end. You yep. said there was a couple of questions you'd like to to us to to sort of chime in and on. Yeah. So, so yeah. So like I start answering this question, but um, the uh, to to one uh, at least one person that was asking this. The um, so one of the questions is like, does Azure Web do security awareness training? Especially since like, uh, you know, you brought this up. Um, uh, you brought this up as part of uh, this presentation. Yeah. That's a fair uh, question. So. Not not as a service, meaning we don't have trainers that will go and do that yet. It's something that we're looking at, but uh, I don't. I want to manage expectation like it's not about to come out. What we have is a bit of a. We're more into the scale and automation and allowing you to do it on your own. So we do offer it through Brainstorm uh, Quick Help. Uh, so our Quick Help product is our LMS, our learning management platform. Uh, mm -hmm. And in there, there is now more and more content about. Uh, security for users like how to use uh, a lot of it is around office 5 but honestly office 5 is their whole life almost for it so it's a lot of uh call it personal hygiene so uh careful with emails and things like that like a lot of stuff they need to do uh so we do offer that and i feel everybody should go through that it is part of our uh, uh the of sure webs office 365 uh, offers uh, you get 45 days of that platform for your client. So it's not a trial. You get 45 days of training. So the expectation is they'll be much better after 45 days of training than they were when they started. So even if you don't, if they don't want to invest any money into it as a partner, I would invest the time to make sure that they go through that training within uh, that that free 45 days, just so that they stop clicking on everything. If I if I could break their fingers off, I would. <laughs> uh, I didn't say that. You're being so, recorded, Guillaume. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's past yeah. the hour, so officially I didn't say it. Uh, what was the other question? So two uh, last, well, one, I just want to add it to, to something to uh, uh, to that. In addition to the, in addition to Quick Help that we actually offer as a part of e-learning, we are making uh, available for free to our partners, say CompTIA uh, cybersecurity uh, train, uh, training course. It's not security plus training, but it's like, say like it's a, it's a certificate in uh, cybersecurity and also in say like okay. how, uh, you know, how we can actually, be, uh, partners can position the conversation about security with their customers. So I want to highlight that that it's actually available for free to partners. Another question is: uh, Is uh, it is available there... now and where? Yes, it's available in the partner toolbox. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I wanted to uh, add that uh, to uh, Guillaume's response. Um, let's see here, and then yeah, Comptia asked... would be sorry. So there's a follow-up question. So yeah, yep. the Comptia material would be for the for more technical inclined people, and then the the Quick Help platform would be for end users. But even so, like the CompTIA content does a very good job of breaking it down, like in general terms for cybersecurity. Okay. So it's if you're a partner, like uh, uh, or want to work with the show up to provide services to, to to customers, cybersecurity services, we do recommend you go through that. It's again, it's available for free yeah. from our partner toolbox. And beyond yep. that, uh, one last question, I suppose, since we're out of time, is there going to be a white label version of this assessment that uh, that we just presented? So I think we said that we were going to do that, but in the it's event, coming. It's yeah, it's, it's not available now, but it's coming. Yeah. 
the idea is for you to, to be able to present that assessment to your client. So we're working towards that. Uh, just just use the assessment once or twice, and then we'll make sure to contact you when there's a new version coming out. Uh, one question that I like that I'd like to answer, uh, and obviously if you're out of time, I understand. But uh, should you charge for the assessment? So that's a good question. We had that question many times. I feel it's more an opportunity for you. Like you'll make a lot more money if people pay attention to your recommendation than if you're charging for it. But sometimes charging for it will give it uh, validity and weight. Like they, if you say, hey, I have this free thing we need to get together on, and then they're like, nah, 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 fine. And then what turns out of it is you're asking them money for projects, then the whole thing doesn't may not sit right with the customer. On the other end, if you say, or let's say they talk to you about security and you say, yes, I have this assessment, it's going to cost you X, Y, Z because it, it takes that many hours to do. And then I, I review all the questions and I propose a plan with it. Then they're much more likely to listen to the recommendations. It, um, it's, it's odd, but I think you'd be better off charging something so that the, the involvement of the client is better. So there's both. If you want a quick in and have those conversations, you could use it that way and not ask them anything. Uh, if you want a bit to invest a little bit more time in the process and make that a, a bit of a more complete thing, then I would charge for it and that will give some some uh, weight to the proceeding. Yeah. And so, yeah, to just to add to the, uh, that, uh, to, in speaking with partners who've already been exposed to this, who've ever made use of this, some of them uh, actually do see value in making this assessment a part of their monetizable assessment for their customers. So this is like, you know, the, the, this, this assessment has been live for, for a you know, short period of time, just in a few uh, few weeks. And in that time, we've already had people who said that, yeah, this, this looks like it's worth money even as it currently is. So it's, you know, look, we've put the, we've made this tool to make it usable and useful to, to all of you. Uh, how you decide to use it, obviously, it, it's up to you. Uh, the but yeah, just know that there are people already uh, who have looked at this and actually think that it's uh, it's worth money or it can be part of how they uh, um, uh, make money off of an assessment. So it's just it's worth noting that that's you know, those are real world comments. So okay, that in so mind, yeah, yeah. So here are a few call to action. So. Uh either assessment.showweb.com or shopweb.com the slash assessment, they'll go to the same place. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a webinar already uh, live around, like 100% around remote work. So if you want more in-depth conversation around that, uh, you can access uh, here, or you can go, I believe, to our YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, and then uh, we have a security uh, virtual event seminar on May 27, a uh, couple of sessions, uh, one of them specifically around, well, one of them with guests from Bitdefender. I'm not sure what the title of their session is. It's not a product presentation. It's really a conversation around uh, security in the context of security. Uh, yep. So they, by Bitdefender was nice enough to, to participate with us in that in that event. And I have a session as well where, don't ask me the title of it because I don't remember. I'm sure it'd be great. It's a mystery presentation. <laughs> Sign up it's for that. Yeah, it's an expansion. Basically, it's an expansion. We're it's it's a three hour event. Uh, just to go, you know, it's like it's a it's a full it's a full on seminar. We're going to be covering what we've covered today, but in more depth. And there's going to be a live QA uh, between let's say like you know, we're encouraging interaction between uh, uh, between attendees and basically the whole bevy of uh, security experts who will be uh, present at the event. We'll also be going through uh, this uh, this assessment in more uh, detail, including say a much deeper dive in into the answers in uh, of uh, the full report uh with again uh, an actual uh, an actual partner like yourselves so that's on may 27th so if you want to register then you just a url here uh, or you can just ask your partner representative uh, so i want to thank everybody for being here especially you henry uh if you have any questions that haven't been answered i know there's a few that we had to skip just for time and context <clears throat> Uh, send them to your rep or send them to us. You saw e, uh, Henry's email address, so please mail bomb Henry. I know he loves please. when you sign him up to newsletters and things like that. He has a big appetite for information. Uh, and then we'll see you around. Thanks for being here. Right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon.